a Hey guys. Hey. All right, shall we get started? Yeah, sure. So let's start with the usual antitrust policy disclaimer from my pledger. There it is for everyone to read. Right. So yeah, welcome to uh, April 6, 2023, Aries VCX community call. Uh, it's again, once again, Thursday, 9 a.m. UTC standard time. And let's see what we have on, enge on agenda today. Uh, so uh, starting with the mentorship program update. So uh, there's a there's a news on that topic. Uh, finally, there's uh, there's been an update from uh, from the review process. So uh, our Aries VCX project submissions have been accepted, uh, reviewed, and accepted. And now we are officially in a stage of uh, accepting accepting many applications. So once again, uh, we have these two projects we have submitted. Uh, one is for the essential UniFi mobile wrapper plus um, Aries v, um, plus um, uh, Aries compliant uh, mediation agent client uh, support, uh, implementing pickup protocol. Uh, and the second project uh, is Aries VCX based uh, message mediator. So these two projects are kind of kind of nice in in uh, in harmony. One is somewhat linked to the other, but uh, both of them is possible to work on independently. So yeah, hopefully we'll have some applicants. And I have, uh, I have uh, catch the news that there are some people interested. Um, so um, there's uh, instructions here as to how to apply. So if you go to the how to apply link, it gets you to this uh, 
mentorship page uh, with all the instructions. Uh, you should uh, make sure to read all of this text, uh, but also uh, the, the actual um, action step at the end is uh, go ahead to the mentorship platform over here under Linux Foundation and essentially find Aries. There's only our uh, Aries project. Um, and then you go ahead and hit apply, fill all the information needed and um you'll be one of the applicants um there's a calendar like official also let me know that there's like a schedule uh, everything in the mentorship program is pretty much scheduled ahead uh, let me see where can i find that information uh now i don't know where it is for applicants uh eligibility how to apply uh for mentees okay i don't know where it is but there's a calendar somewhere with a schedule yeah i don't know uh but this is basically uh starting yesterday uh starts the period for sending the uh program applications and i think it takes uh that last for maybe 10 weeks or two, 10, 10 days or two weeks, something like that. And after that, uh, we'll be picking, be essentially picking up the, the, uh, the mentees for, among the applicants for these two projects. Uh, so yeah, so I'm looking forward. Uh, who are we gonna, who are we gonna have on board here? and uh, who we can uh, support in 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 learning Aries and uh, Rust and all the stuff around what we do. Um, yeah, that that's that's pretty much it here. Um, any notes, any comments? It's awesome, exciting. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Let's let's go ahead then. Uh, so uh, brief overview of the work done since the last call. So we had from George uh, the dependency feature flagging. Uh, this is really great step forward. I just did my review this morning and I uh, added uh, Mira and uh, Bogdan among the reviewers. So guys, have a look. Uh, I think one additional approve uh, will be enough. Uh, it's a green light from me. It's a good, good. It's a great improvement. I, I also really like uh, the uh, these uh, comments here. It's really a nice cherry on the top to document all of the features we have right now. So great job. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to map out in my head what they all do, and then I figured I should just write it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. It was a good idea. It was about the time. Uh, yeah, next up, uh, there was this small CI improvement. Uh, essentially, when you're gonna, uh, when you create a PR, you can uh, uh, set a skip CI tag on it, a, a label, uh, and that will cause that majority of the jobs will be skipped. Um, so, it's not really displayed here, but uh, it's uh, radically uh, reduces the CI time and the compute time. Uh, although although GitHub actions on open source repos are free, uh, from empirical experience, I can tell that uh, there is certain limits. And when you run lots of lots of when you spend lots of compute time, it will kind of trim you down and hold you back for a while. Uh, until some a refresh period, I'm I'm not sure exactly what the numbers are, but there is some limits, I guess, to prevent people misusing the open source GitHub actions. I was um I was meaning to ask about the skip CI one. Um, do you think there's any danger in someone submitting something and applying that skip CI tag, and it, it actually is breaking, you know, the Android right. build? Yeah, I think I think we should uh, then. Uh, in that kind of case, we should ask the person to remove it 
towards the end of the you know the like uh like it's useful maybe when you're drafting pr and you don't want to like trigger it trigger the ci all the time but yeah, I think we shouldn't merge uh, PRs where the pipeline didn't run completely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Do we have like, um, is there like a guideline for PRs in the repo? Um, Not maybe that could now, be, I suppose. There's a... Yeah, maybe that could be like a rule, you know, you have to pass the CI without any skips before uh, it gets merged in. Right. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. We could, uh, we we can uh, perhaps add it here. I mean, this is, the, I guess, this is the only text we have about uh, pull requests. No, there's a right. more detailed guide. No, this is generic. This is just GitHub link. Uh, yeah, we can we can mention it here, or uh, I, I guess that would be reasonable. All right, uh, next up, uh, there was also a small fix on uh, libvcx from Pomfar. Uh, apparently some of the method signatures were, uh, were not synced up with uh, like the, the style we are using elsewhere. Uh, I'm not sure if it was actually causing a bug, but um, it's, a, it's a consolidation with the rest of the methods we have in these .m files. So thanks to Pomfar for this fix. And next we have uh, work in progress. Uh, so uh, from Bogdan's side, we have uh, currently integration slash testing of the messages great. How's, how's that coming along? It's been cool as hell. Um, basically still chasing down regression stuff. Oh, but it's sorry. Like Sorry, Bogdan. Uh, it's it's kind of difficult to hear you right now. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Is it any better now? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, my microphone, my headphones are probably acting up. Okay, so uh, yeah, I was saying that it's it's as painful as ever. Um, basically, still chasing down some regression stuff, um, making progress, but it it is slow. So uh, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to. I, I, it feels like. Um, there's just one more thing, but then I fix that, and then another thing, like underneath, uh, starts to to fail. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels like I'm close. So a lot more of the tests are passing now. It's just uh, right now it really feels like there's just one more thing. But right. Being feeling like that. Um, yeah. Mm. But it was to be expected. I mean, I completely and entirely anticipated this, but. It's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, then uh, other other items we're in progress. Uh, as a small PR I pushed today, it's uh, it's uh, added a new method for credential issuer uh, role on the issuance protocol uh, to be able to get a revocation ID of um, issued credential. Uh, it's a uh, pretty sim pretty pretty small. Um, next up, uh, yeah, there's a ongoing effort from Stevane uh, around the uh, encoding of credential attributes. So we had a bit of, quite a bit of like exchanges here. Um, and uh, the last point we reached, I guess, uh, was the some further further requests from from Bogdan. So uh, let's see uh, let's see uh, how this how this goes. Um, and yeah, there's one more uh, one more first time contributor also 
were going on from Andy Wayne um, around the refactoring of post message. Um, but uh, there are some tests failing right now, so it still needs some work. Um, yeah, that that's that's it, I guess. Um, and then uh, the upcoming work, I messed up this a little bit. Uh, I guess this is not how I meant to put it in the agenda. So let me just fix it up. Uh, this was supposed to be here at the a discussion portion. Like that. Um, let's save this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would, I guess, uh, I'm just wondering uh, about, uh, about the, um, uh, type state refactoring. I know George, like you started a while ago, but it was back then before we even had uh, the one of the guide yeah. guidelines implementation implementation guidelines for state machines. Um, yeah, yeah. I need to do exactly what you said and try to sketch it out first and and show you guys. Um, yeah, following those guidelines. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So I guess uh, like this will be still reworked quite a bit, right? To to address those uh, those updates. Yeah, for sure. And um, I assume uh, it'll also be changed to use the new messages to stuff as well. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay. So I guess let's get the well. I mean, the messages are close. So technically, if you would have, I, I think, uh, Bogdan can correct me here, but I think if you would have a capacity, like you can, you can start already maybe on top of the mess, you know, the on top of Bogdan's uh, PR, which is mostly done as I understood. Um, and just, well, and, and actually like before that, like, right, we need to just do the draft or the design and, Get it kind of approved. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think um, uh, Bogdan's new PR should affect this um, because you know the messages to creators is, is already merged in, um, mm. right? So yeah, it's only going to be a name change. So because we're basically going to deprecate the old messages crate when the entire integration is done. So then it's just going to be like a small name change. Just change messages to messages. And, Everything should still work. Although there, there are some couple of things that have changed uh, that I discovered during the integration, but they're pretty much minor stuff. I don't think they're, they're going to inconvenience you in any way. Hmm. Um, maybe, okay. question, uh, George, um, do, do you think you will have some capacity to work on this? Let's say, you know, till the, till the next meeting, or uh, are you busy with, you know, yeah, yeah, I can, I can try get it all done. Um, I'll, I'll do the sketch first and um, show you guys that just to make sure. Right. Go for... Yeah, I mean, don't take this as some sort of pressure. Just literally, just no, ask no. <laughs> if you have the time or not to to kind okay. of have some some expectation, like how the progress is gonna be or when are we gonna push push those other state machines? Yeah. Forward. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm hoping there's not too much refactoring that's needed um but you know i'll let you know if i'm struggling to mm -hmm. progress okay uh yeah and i guess that's that's pretty much it um there's a few and meeting discussion points so maybe i'll skip this for like i'll, I'll leave this for the last uh i just wanted to touch on the releases uh so we were we were mentioning that the 054 uh, would be with the, the new messages crate, but uh, <clears throat> I was thinking it would be maybe good to uh, do release before that, uh, to do like 054 and now, and essentially uh, I'll, I'll revert back, refer back to the breaking, semi-breaking change I was doing um that was the 
Code by name. Right, uh, so so in 050, basically in 053 release, there was these changes introduced with some sort of migration step. And it was uh, it was um, like planned that in the next 054 release, uh, we would drop basically kind of the, uh, the embedded backwards compatibility support. So in 054, you will have to have your state machines migrated. And so I was thinking we can do this now. We can really 054, we dropped uh, this backwards Why? compatibility support. Why not so, wait for the messages thing to be done? Uh, because like, messages on itself are quite a big change. So we could separate those two big changes like, you know, to like, this is breaking change and your change is not, the messages change is not breaking, but it's big one. So I think it will be like safer for people to upgrade if, you know, those, those changes are more granular. Like you don't have two kind of big things in single release. So, so that we could do 050 now, and then as soon as the messages goes out, uh, the integration, then we can do 055 and put it there. It's probably not going to take that much longer, though. Uh huh. If if God is willing, it can be done today. But uh, yeah, I, I think personally, I think we can hold on a bit longer, maybe until next week. And if the messages integration is not finalized by then, then okay, we can uh, maybe go ahead with this plan. Well, it, it's not really about like to um, like uh, to do it like as soon as possible or something like that. Just to separate those changes um, into two releases to to you know to make uh, smaller incremental steps. And if the message is, is ready today, we can do it in the opposite order as well. Like maybe one first release could be the messages, let's say, and then 055, we can drop this uh, compatibility support. So it will be a bit of a tweaked plan, but uh, the releases will be more uh, granular or incremental. I don't know, to me, it just seems odd to make two releases simply because we would have two big changes. I don't think it's not like it, it's a lot of them. Uh, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm imagining someone, some consumer that 0 0.54 comes out, they migrate to it, let's say they adapt their code and then 0 0.55 comes out and maybe they're gonna have to adapt their code again, you know, slightly or something like that. I, if I were a consumer, I would rather have to adapt it only once but that's just my opinion yeah i don't know but then you have to like adapt to two things at, at the same time uh, you, instead of uh, whereas with two releases you can do things safer w what's your opinion george um i'm not too well versed on what's normal in an open source to have a strong opinion um, but, uh, yeah, I don't mind incremental small changes at a time. Um, would you say it's a lot of effort to make different releases? No, no, it, it, it's not that that's why I advocate for, for making, uh, basically as many releases as possible. And we don't even follow the, uh, uh semantic versioning right now. And it's very cheap to make releases. It doesn't consume any time, essentially. Yeah, I guess maybe one argument um, for having separate releases is if the messages stuff uh, accidentally introduces some new bug, um, I trust that it won't, but hypothetically, if it did, then a consumer who just wants this new migration can just use uh, 0.54 and not have to worry about whatever might be introduced by the new messages crate. Um, so 
yeah, they have access to that quick fix rather than this whole new bunch of changes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I like incremental small changes. Well, it's 2v1, so you guys win. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, no, it's, a, it's good reasoning. Um, I don't know, I just, uh, I, I, as I said, it's a matter of, I guess, personal preference, but uh, democracy. So let's go with the incremental releases then. Okay, we'll see how the timing goes, and uh, and uh, it it doesn't really matter which of these two releases will include message, uh, rather rather the, the idea is that it will be a uh, separate. Yeah, uh, um, but yeah. Bogdan, it shouldn't affect you, right? Um, if a point five four comes out without no, the messages. Uh, sorry, sorry, George, I missed that. I was just wondering if if it would affect uh, Bogdan by releasing 0. 0.54 uh, before messages is implemented. Um, but uh, I think the answer was no, it, it shouldn't affect the work. Um, mm. It doesn't affect it, no. So it's... yeah, as long as it's not high cost to make those releases, then may as well split them out into two, in my opinion. Mm. Okay, thank you guys. Um, I think this point here, uh, this is uh, this is outdated from the last meeting. Uh, but I had like I put one more point here, some like good a good first issue grooming. I just thought like maybe we can just brainstorm a little bit, and. Uh, See if we can come up with any kind of good first issues. Uh, so basically, right now this one, the the seven seven two and seven seven six is being worked on, and I was told uh, by someone that uh, they want to pick uh, this one. No, 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 they want to pick up this one. Uh, this one is very tiny, honestly, uh, and this one, let's say, it's free, but. Uh, it just it just won. Uh, so I don't know, like like I think there was some good first issue candidates like in the messages, uh, the new messages crates, perhaps. Um, is there something comes to your mind, Bogdan? That somebody could pick up and you know finish some tests or improve something, something else may necessarily too difficult and doesn't have to be like you know super useful it's just like uh, a, a mod kind of task to you know instruct someone to do something to just get into the code base and kind of there was there were some things there were some things but i'm basically wrote them down as notes to discuss them um essentially it's about how the attributes like credential attributes are serialized um and mainly um the fact that you can get a value and by the rfcs generally what happens is that if there is no mime type um field provided then the value is a string or something like that if it is if there is a mime type provided then the value is a base 64 encoded string and then uh, the, the mind type tells you what to do with the, the actual value. Now, the way that it's designed right now um, is that these are two separate uh, like fields in the, in the credential attribute. And it's the same thing for the presentation attributes. Um, but I realized looking at that uh, at some point later on that we could basically have, um, I don't know, just, a, just an untagged enum where the variants are either uh, like just the value, which would basically just be a string or um, a structure where you have the, both the mime type and the uh, base 64 encoded value. And this will basically ensure that um, you either get, like either get the mime type and you do something with it, or you get, you just get a string and then you, you use that as is. Um, 
But right now, the mime type is basically an option. And that means you got to match on it, see if you got it, and then do something with it. Essentially, it's, it ends up pretty much being the same thing. But from a structural point of view, it's more um, more intuitive that you're either going to get this variant of the data and you process it somehow, or you get this other variant of the data and then you process it differently. Whereas with the mind type, if it's there, if it's not there, then it's just an option. It's, uh, it's a bit more of a cognitive effort and it's more, most likely the code will look cleaner based on, on this change. It's not something big, so that could be one thing, for instance. Would you mind to write this down as uh, one of the issues? I think that so sounds good to me um, from what you described. Maybe I doesn't... will. Um, I guess the reason I didn't is because it's, I didn't yet. I wanted to at some point. It's just that I wanted to get the integration with. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I, with, so. I get that. Um, once we that's can... done, we can definitely write it down. Right, right. We can just kind of keep it on a on a like good first issue backlog here. I mean, we can can keep keep a note here and then perhaps create it uh, next week or or something. And and I was thinking uh, from my review when I was doing um, the review on your PR, I think I had the comments about uh, like setting up some hashes or base sixty four, and I don't remember the details. I just feel like yeah, you, some you were talking about some validation of the base sixty four data, and I. I'm honestly against that um, because we're basically like you're just getting some base64 data. It's the user's responsibility to provide valid base64 data. If they don't, it's not like the world is going to get set on fire. It's just that uh, they're not going to get the response they expect if they get any response at all. So I, think I don't there think it's also something about the hash, like hashing, though. Or like the, I don't remember the details. I'll try to look it up. I, I don't know if, you know, maybe maybe you uh, like already, as, as you described now, like maybe those suggestions I had or ideas, maybe they're not the right thing to do in the first place, but I'll just leave, I'll leave a note here uh, for like my own review, uh, like uh, messages, hashes and base 64 and, I'll see if I can come up with something and then we can we can discuss. Okay. I honestly don't recall anything about hashing. But... Uh, yeah, there's some SHA-256, I think, for the date, for the attachment, oh, okay. something like that. All right, the checksum, fair enough. So um, I think that, yeah. Yeah, there was something about the checksum validation. But then again, I don't know if that's necessarily something that should belong in the messages crate with that being just um, like the message structure. Um, that's pretty much it. Like that sort of validation, we might, um, I guess this is a broader topic, but there might be the, the need to have some sort of validation mechanism for multiple messages. I don't know right now, um, but then, Again, I'm not sure if that should belong in the messages crate per se, or how to really go about it. Um, but yeah, it was the attachment, the attachment uh, checksum. That's what you were uh, you were referring to. And yeah. then there's also the question, like, what do you do if the the checksum doesn't match? You know. Mm. Okay, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see if I can find something something reasonable. But I don't think that's a, like a, at least in terms of discussion. I don't think that's a good first issue. So we should at least like it might be once we clear it out and realize how to go about it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So I think we should have an approach first before we even write it down as an issue. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll just leave it. I'm not creating issue yet. I'll just leave it here uh, uh, as a note, and uh, uh, maybe I'll manage. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. I think to it's going to make more sense if you write down attachment checksum. The messages hashes is probably going to confuse you. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. Uh, I have typo or touch. No, it's not typo. Um, I don't know. Uh, what else? What else could we? Is there any any other kind there of were, comes to your yeah, mind? There were some other things. Um, um, so the base sixty four thing that that was again regarding the attachment. Um, there are some errors. They're mostly serialization or deserialization errors. So ultimately, they just get represented as strings. Um, and just to kind of move a bit faster, I let them just be strings. Uh, but there are some errors that are returned to strings, and they could be like implemented as uh, actual error types. I don't have one in mind right now. There are a couple of them, like three or four, something like that. So there could be some errors made out of that, the proper error types. And again, I think that's a fairly good first issue. Uh, so what should what should I note? Um, um, convert string errors to error types. Okay. And uh, the next thing which came to my mind as you were speaking was perhaps uh, just a simple task like to add a message messages and message types for some of the other protocols, like for example, pickup protocol, you know, or like. I don't know, kind of whatever, like did the exchange protocol or those yeah. those things we are missing. I guess those mm -hmm. should be simple for anyone to do because they just kind of can use the yeah, same they can look around. Right. Yeah, shouldn't be too difficult. That would actually be pretty good. They can sort of breathe in the entire crate and how it's organized and how it all works. So, um, it's actually a good idea. Let's see. Uh, I don't know, something outside of message. Uh, most of the, yeah, these are pretty much all in the message create. I'm wondering if we could find some, if there's something we can find in Aries GCX itself, perhaps. Although there's lots of reconstruction, so it's a bit more difficult. Well, I don't have anything right now, so maybe I'll look through Codebase and try to see if I can find anything. Uh, seems like you guys also don't. So I guess yeah. we'll leave it at the that. Only things, the only things that come to my mind is issues aren't, aren't good first issues. They're not fun stuff. And <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't be good first issues. So right, I got nothing right. to contribute. <laughs> I see. Okay. Okay, okay, so I'll leave it like this. Uh, I'll delete this piece. And I think uh, anyone has anything else to cover before we close up? Nothing from my side. Nothing from me. All right, guys, I'm clicking update. Um, because this page is finalized and um, the only thing left is to wish you all guys have a good day and see you again next time. Thank you. Cool, yeah. you guys too. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.